I'm Matt. In this video, I would like to share with you some thoughts that I have on the Korg Poly 6, a analog synthesizer from 1981. So let's get started. My plan in this video is just to discuss some of the features, um, some of the characteristics that make this synthesizer maybe a little more unique, talk about the way it's configured and, and really how I use it. And so I hope you'll find that interesting. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the infamous battery issue that has plagued this synthesizer for lots of years now. There was a rechargeable battery that was that was uh, put on at the time of manufacturing onto the main circuit card and over time those batteries would, the case would lose integrity and battery acid would, would leak out onto the board. This damaged many Poly 6 boards over time and I, I think even the Poly 61 maybe had the same battery with the same issue. And you can see here in, in this this little video you can see where the where the battery sits and then I've got a couple of boards here so the first one is where the battery sits and then the second one is a picture of a board with the battery removed but you can see the residual damage left behind so this was really an Achilles heel for the poly 6 and has I would suspect taken many many of them out of service over the years there are some ways around that at this point there's a company well, there's a few different companies that make uh, aftermarket replacements. My dad and I have repaired two of these Poly 6s with the battery issue. Um, on the first one we did, we chose the, the Kiwi 6 mod, um, also replaced the power supply. Um, it upgraded it to MIDI functionality. It, it did several things to the synthesizer. For, for this restoration, we decided to, we found a place that sold a um, aftermarket reproduction CPU card that was not populated. And so we decided to try that route this time and, and so moved, uh, put a lot of new components on that, on that new card, but uh, moved some over from some of the old cards that we couldn't get. And it took us a little while. We, we had to do some, some troubleshooting. It wasn't just as easy as populating the new card and popping it in and going, but we finally got it up and running. And in my opinion, and I think probably at this point, these things being 40, 40 plus years old, I think probably they've all aged differently and in different conditions. And so I imagine you would be hard pressed to find two Poly 6 synthesizers that would sound identical to one another, maybe even when they were new, but for sure by now. And my opinion is I like the sound of the second one that we've done where we just built, rebuilt a circuit card and maintain all the other original functionality. The power supply is the same, um, memory is the same, there was no, no expanded memory. Uh, I just like the sound of it better. I don't know, I think part of it is, I think we did a better job tuning this one. It, it took some doing, but we got the tuning dialed in really well and I think it sounds really good. I think, but again, I think that tuning is part of it. So that's kind of the my history with with this battery issue and, and fixing it over time, uh, well, over two Poly 6 reconstructions. So the next thing I'll mention here is the wooden case, and I use the term wood lightly. The, um, the end cheeks on this synthesizer are made of some kind of particle board with a, basically a laminate over it, and um, this is also, I think, kind of been the demise of these of this synthesizer over the years too basically once you once you knock a corner loose on this the whole in whole in caps just going to start disintegrating so with the first poly 6 that we rebuilt we actually ordered an aftermarket cabinet i believe it was made of walnut very pretty um i think it actually weighs less than the original cabinet does but very sturdy um very attractive and I would potentially entertain that thought again for this one if I was keeping it but this one's going to be uh, resold here in the near future so we did not we did not make that upgrade it did have one corner that down here that was starting to work loose and I'll show you a picture of that but um, dad basically used some glue and uh, was able to kind of piece that corner back together and it's holding really well it looks it looks as good as it can um, given the the damage that that was present but it looks much better now but the case itself um, 
you know, it seems pretty sturdy other than if you start knocking pieces off of it. So, um, but again, my, my preference would be the, the nice aftermarket cabinets that you can get. So another thing about the Poly 6 is the 61 key key bed. Uh, that's something that I'm a big fan of. I've had 49 key synthesizers before. Um, I have the Op 6 sitting here with 37. I'm not going to go down that road, but um, 61 keys, if you're not playing a, an acoustic piano, in my opinion, 61 keys is the perfect number. I have the Korg Prolog, and I had the 49 key version originally and upgraded to 61, um, not because of 16 voices versus 8. That really doesn't seem to have made a difference to, to for what I use it for. But I found myself with the 49 key version using the octave up and down buttons quite a bit. So, uh, again, 61 keys just really is the right number, in my opinion. Now, the key bed itself definitely leaves something to be desired. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it here, but it is it is extremely noisy. It's, I don't, I don't know that it's clacky. Like there's some keyboards you hit and it just sounds like, you know, plastic on plastic or plastic directly on a metal. It doesn't have that kind of a feel or sound to it, but it's, I don't know. I, it's hard to describe. You can, you can almost hear like a spring working in there. Point is it, it feels, it feels clacky. And if you slip off of a key, you can sure hear that. But again, you know, Korg was trying to get this synthesizer out at a certain price point and I'm sure that the key bed was one of the things that that took a hit in order to attain that goal. But now moving on to the controls of the Poly 6. This is what I love about this synthesizer. The layout makes sense to me. Um, I've only I've only been around analog synthesis, subtractive synthesis, whatever for two or three years now. But this is just a simple setup. Basically, everything is is knob per function. Um, there are no menus. There's no you know small screen where you have to dig through stuff. Everything is is present right in front of you. And for me, I I just really appreciate that. The Poly Six has 32 patches of memory, so you can save up to 32 patches. There's 32 factory patches in there right now. Some of those sounds are nice, and if you're a preset person, I Usually I am a preset person, um, but more on the digital sense with, you know, 250 or a thousand presets and a little more difficulty in programming your own sounds. I, I tend to go more for presets in those cases. But in the case of the Poly 6, I, it's almost like, like the grandmother where you don't really even need presets. Like the whole joy of the instrument is just diving in and, and messing with all of, all these controls. Everything, again, is right in front of you, and I, I love that about this synthesizer. You know, the arpeggiator's right there. You have, it has a built-in effects unit, but again, everything is just, it's right there, it's so simple to navigate, and that's that's one of the things that I really, really love about, about this keyboard. And even if you couldn't retain these patches in the memory, again, I don't think I would care. I, I can set a patch up pretty fast on this that's gonna be something that I'm looking to play and, and be able to use it. So pitch and mod wheel um, both sit over here directly to the left of the key bed on the on the Korg Prolog and I know I kind of go back to that for comparison's sake but um, you know they're they're up on the chassis and I think part of the goal there was to try to keep the keyboard as narrow as they could so they move those up and over the keys. Um, I've heard people gripe about both configurations and to be honest it it doesn't matter to me one way or the other as long as i know where it's at yeah i mean it, it makes sense there it makes sense there i'm good either way jumping back real quick to the knob per function um, i did a video on this i don't know i think early this year sometime when i had the other poly six and i i did not do a very good job of articulating one of the things that i really like is uh in the modulation section on the poly six you have the ability it you have the ability to delay the onset of the LFO which i understand is is probably fairly common but what i didn't say very well in that video was i love the fact that there is a dedicated delay knob for the LFO like i like to set a you know like a pad sound where 
I have a delay on the LFO, so I don't get that that nice warble, that modulation, until I've held the, the sound down for a little bit. So, you know, the idea being when you're just, if you're on and off pretty quick, you just get the straight sound. But then when you land, then you get that nice vibrato that kicks in, and I really like that. And again, I just um, really like the fact that there is a dedicated delay knob right here on the, on the face to get to. So one of the things that I find, um, I don't think annoying is the right word, but one of the characteristics I would point out is it seems like on the attack knob, a little bit on the cutoff, but especially on the attack, it seems like there's almost no difference. It's so the, the dial goes from zero to 10. It seems like there's almost no difference um, until you get up to between four and five before you start feeling like there's any attack time. Everything up to four to me sounds like it's still just immediate attack. Um, it could be something with the calibration, but I mean, we, we got it back to factory and both poly sixes that I've had and worked with had that same characteristic. And then I've also noticed it kind of on the release knob at times, like it seems like the real release range starts at about six and it goes to 10. And once you hit it, you know, you probably six to seven or five to six maybe is a decent amount of release, something that's usable. And then after that, it just becomes this this thing that carries on. Again, it could be a calibration issue, but I don't think it is. Just a characteristic of the envelope generator on the Poly 6. So with all these things being said, you know, the question has to be asked, would I recommend a Poly 6 to you? The answer is definitely. There are issues that you may have to work through if you were to get one. For example, we've calibrated this thing. We went through the process a couple of different times because we kept running into snags. But Right now, the resonance control on the filter seems like it's causing some sort of distortion when I get it up to, say, three or so, any higher than that. May just be, again, a characteristic of this particular synth, but um, the point is, I have found on both Poly 6s that we've worked on, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears is worth it. I think the sound is is great again i love the simplicity of the layout you know it, it just it does the job and it does it with i think with some character and with some flair but it's very uh it, i think it's very dependable you know what you're going to get out of it um there's never any surprises per se i mean there's still things that i find where i'm like wow that's a great sound but i also know exactly what to do to get what i want out of it and for me that's a valuable thing so I would definitely recommend a Poly 6 if you have an opportunity to pick one up somewhere along the way. Just know that 40-year-old synthesizer with 40-year-old parts, you could be looking at, at doing some, needing to do some work uh, either to get it up and running or to be able to maintain it long term. So those are just some of the points I wanted to bring up about the Poly 6. I think the best thing now is just to play some sounds. So I'm going to play a little bit and um, if you've made it this far into the video, Thanks for sticking around and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.